Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 306. Let's turn to it. Page number 306 and today is our lesson number 74. Let's take a look at it. The very first problem it says in a baseball tournament a boy hits 11 out of 15 times. He hits 11 out of 15 times. Question simply is which of the following is the decimal equivalent of the boy's average? So we're looking for decimal equivalent of 11 out of 15. Now here's where, as I always remind you, T's is like uh, T's is a standardized exam. And like any other standardized exam, anywhere in the world, for anything at all. For example, you might take a standardized exam to become a firefighter or you might take a standardized exam to become a police person or to join the military or to become a doctor or to get into college. But as long as you know that the exam that you're about to take is a standardized exam, then all standardized exams share certain characteristics. And one of the characteristics of the standardized exam is that the amount of work that you put in a problem depends on two things. It depends on, first of all, what is being asked and what, you, what is being told. In, in, the, in the problem itself, what, what is it that you're being told and what, what is it that you're being asked and it equally depends on how the answer choices are presented to you which is the part most people do not realize. The amount of work that I'm going to put into in a given problem is dictated by how the answer choices are presented to me. Do you understand? For example here, look, for example here the answer choices that they give us are 0.733 1.36, 4.0, and finally 26 for crying out loud. How do they get 26? How do you suppose they got 26? They're simply adding the two numbers. No, even the yeah, they're adding the two numbers, that's how. They are asking us the decimal equivalent of 11 over 15. What do you notice when you look at 11 over 15? What do you notice? Are you able to see immediately that this quantity, whatever the hell it is, is less than 1? It is less, 11 over 15 is less than 1. How many quantities do you see here that are less than 1? That's it, you're done. The answer is A. You don't have to do anything. Don't waste your time. Number 2. Uh, this was num not number 1, this was number This was number 12. Number 13. Nobody's going to give you any extra credit. Nobody's going to give you any extra credit if you sit there like a good schoolboy or a good schoolgirl and do all the work because uh, it's, comp it's, it's graded by a computer. You get one point for getting a right answer, that's it. It doesn't matter how you got the answer. That's the answer. Hey, it's the only number, it's the only number among the four, among the four that is less than one. Number, number 13. They are asking us to write 1910 in Roman numeral. All right. Write 1910 in Roman numeral. And as I always remind you, as I as I've always been reminding you since day number 61 that uh, from day number 61 through day 70 we did exam number one, practice exam number one and now we're doing exam number two but you must uh, 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 you must make sure that you have watched the first 60 videos, day one through 60 which is where we learn all the materials from day number from page 50 through 110 on day number 35 and 36 is where we learn how to convert Roman numerals into Arabic num uh, numeral and vice versa and if you have not watched those two videos make sure you Go and watch those videos, 35 and 36. 1910. Now, the only way, 
the only way that the Romans knew how to express the notion of 1910, 1910 is, remember, Roman numerals are additive, as we always uh, remind ourselves, they are additive. The only way they knew of expressing this notion was to add these numbers up, 1000 plus 900 plus 10. That's the only way they could express the notion. Do you understand? That's the only way they could express the idea of 1910. How do we write 100? 100 is M. Remember, M is for one. Or rather, how do we how do we write 1000? 1000 is M. Remember, M stands for M stands for mil. Uh, M stands for mil, which means 1000. Hence, the notion of milliliter, 1000 of a liter, milli, milli, milligram, is a thousand of a gram. Mil means 1000. How do we express 900? Well, 900. The, the idea of 900 is the same as the idea of 9. How, how did Roman express the idea of 9? The only way the Roman knew how to express the idea of 9 was to express this as 10 minus 1. And how would they subtract 1? They would write the symbol for 1 and then the lower number, the lower quantity 1, will go to the left of it, as you know already. So if a lower number appears to the left of the higher number, then that number is to be subtracted from this number, which is exactly what we're going to do here. So we write our 1000 first, and then we subtract 100. And what symbol do we use for 100? C. There you go. There is your 1000 plus 900, and finally the 10, which is X. That's it. That's your answer. M, C, M, X. M, C, M, X. And that will be answer choice A. Let's move on to number 14. Question number 14. We are asked to simplify an algebraic expression. We are asked to simplify an algebraic expression. And the expression that is given to us is x minus 7 x minus 7 and 2x plus 1. And we have to simplify it. Let's do it. This is number 14. So we have to simplify it. We, we take the x, we multiply it by 2x. x times 2x is going to give you 2x squared. Then we take the x and multiply it by 1. 1 times x, 1 times x is going to give us x. Now we take the negative 7 part here, here and multiply it by 2x. Negative 7 times 2x. So uh, technically what it is is plus negative 7 times 2x. And finally, negative 7 times 1, negative 7 times 1. Of course, I didn't have to do this in a silly way like this. We could have, we could have gone directly. So it's 2x squared plus x, and then negative 7. That's the part I'm trying to emphasize here. This negative 7, let's put this negative a little bit lower because it's way up in the sky. This negative 7 has to be multiplied by this negative 7, when you do that, negative 7 times 2x is this part, and then negative 7 times positive 1. So negative 7 times 2x is going to give us negative 14x, and then negative 7 times positive 1 is going to give us negative 7. Now we have to combine the like terms. We are not done yet. We have to combine the like terms. 2x squared is just 2x squared because there is no other term with the x squared in it. But here we see an x, and here we see a negative 4x, a negative 14x. Positive 1, this is positive x the same as positive 1x and a negative 14x. Positive 1 and a negative 14 is negative 13. Negative 13x and then negative 7. That is your answer. And that will be answer choice C. Answer choice C. 2x squared minus 13x minus x. Sorry, minus 7 rather. rather. Last one on the page, number 15. Number 15. In number 15, we have to identify the independent variable and the dependent variable. It says, as the season changes, the temperature changes. As the season changes, as the seasons 
or the seasons plural, as the seasons change, you should say. Well, it doesn't really matter whether it's plural or singular. As the seasons change, temperature, temperature changes. So we have to figure out what depends on what. Well, let's find out what what, what can be the as seasons change, the temperature changes. What they're trying to say here is, this is same as saying, this is same as saying, the change in temperature, change in temperature, depends on the seasons. Or if you like, the outside temperature, the outside temperature depends on, depends on season, depends on season. So season, the seasons outside is the independent variable, and the temperature depends on the season. So temperature is the dependent variable. Temperature is the dependent variable. Which of the following is the dependent variable? The answer is temperature. The answer is A. Temperature is the dependent variable. The temperature that we observe depends on what the seasons happens to be. It, the temperature depends on what the seasons happens to be, which seems logical. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.